I saw, I quoted this in my newsletter this week about the stats of how few Americans can join. 76% of American adults aged 17 to 24 are either too obese to qualify or have other medical issues or criminal histories that would make them ineligible to serve in the U.S. Armed Forces without a waiver. I wish that number was higher. (laughs) I'm being dead serious. I hear people... I'm all about inclusivity. Like, I don't have a problem with inclusivity. It bothers me when it's inclusivity for inclusivity's purpose and just for just so we can say we're inclusive. I think that the military should be very exclusive. I think it should be extremely difficult to be able to join and proceed down a pipeline that you want to go down. Because at the end of the day, you I look at what is it that you want to do and what are the standards for that job? What are they based off of? And, and I, I can only speak through the lens of my own previous military experience. The standards that are that our job was based on and that we were held to came from a battlefield. And I don't give a shit about your woke ideology because none of that matters when you're covered with your friend's brains. Not a single stretch of that shit matters whatsoever. All of those ideologies and all of these platforms and and ideas that people want to put onto the military just so they can say that they did, I think that they should be removed. I think it should be super hard to get into the military. We should exclude most people from it because they don't meet the physical standard, the uh, whatever standards are listed, with the uh, intelligence standard, the educational standards, all of those things. That's a good thing. Um, I think we are headed down the wrong path when we just start opening the doors up and letting all of those people in because that is not a military that is based – to operate in the environment that the standards are based upon. I had a conversation with Heather MacDonald, who has written a book called When Race Trumps Merit, and she's talking about how affirmative action for different ethnic groups is causing meritocracy to kind of be thrown out of the window. And it's it kind of it's really uncomfortable, actually, to, to kind of go through because there's a lot of pretty sort of harsh and, and disquieting stats that you start to learn. But the main thing that I realized was most people – most sane people wouldn't have a problem with the military having an incredibly rigorous standard for entry because they understand that if you get this wrong, mortal danger is on the other side of it, right? If you have somebody that is unable to keep up with the rest of their platoon because of their physical fitness or because they've got diabetes or because they've got a gluten intolerance or whatever, that person puts themselves and everybody else at risk. But really, almost all industries are just a difference of degree, not a difference of kind away from that. So she used this example of uh, underrepresentation uh, within Alzheimer's research or Parkinson's research. But the problem that you have, if you start to do uh, an excessive amount of affirmative action in that, uh, especially if you completely disregard or mostly disregard meritocracy, is that you slow down Parkinson's and Alzheimer's research, mm-hmm. which is directly impacting people's quality of life. Yeah. So, okay, it's not mortal danger, but it's like health span and lifespan. And it's mortal danger for some. Precisely. So you go, okay. And then, so where, at, at which point, all the way down to the checkout operator, you know, like at, at what point do we say that this doesn't have a, a, a operating based on merit doesn't have a place to be within this system. It's really hard to find a line at which you go, yeah, it's it's about there. It's about the person that professionally does cro- crochet or fucking bakes cakes or something yeah. like that, you know? I mean, I I think that the, the conversation should be had and it's probably going to be a shifting scale depending on what you're talking about. Um, you know, should it be as difficult to join the military as it is to work at a Dunkin' Donuts? No. Right, like we need to be able to have a, a sliding scale. We're an advanced species; we have the ability to think. Let's use that skill a little bit more. Did you see that um, criticism around Navy SEAL selection being too harsh, uh, as SEALs were sprayed with tear gas and forced mm-hmm. to sing "Happy Birthday"? Yeah, you see this video. Yeah, it's it fucking ago. awesome. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I, I say that a little bit tongue in cheek. First off, anybody who's been through that pipeline has experienced that. And there's a few ways that you can look at it. Uh, From my understanding, what I will say is this. From my understanding, from what I have heard from other instructors that were there, those particular instructors, instructors were a little bit off the reservation. And this can happen because instructors, again, you wear this blue and gold t-shirt and your hat and your shorts and you roll your socks a super dumb way. And it's just people. 
They might all look the same to the outside perspective, but just because you're an instructor or even a SEAL doesn't mean that you're a good person by any stretch. You get the wrong person in the wrong role, bad shit is going to happen. So the amount of CS gas that they were exposed to, from my understanding, exceeded what the, um, what do they call it? It's a, God, of course I can't remember right now. It's every, evo it's an evolution cheat. So everything that happens in SEAL training, the, the room for imagination is almost non-existent. It's basically like pull the three ring binder. Here is what we are trying to accomplish. It's like, you know, the mission statement, here's what we're trying to accomplish. Here's our boundaries. This is the evolution. This is what it is. This is how long we're going to do it for. The students don't know this. So as a student, it's very chaotic. I didn't know this until I went back as an instructor. I'm like, holy shit. Like basically every There's day. There's limits to this. The limits are unbelievable. And the safety net should be incredibly robust, but also invisible to the students. There's a portion of that training. I'm like, yeah, you may, maybe you should feel like you're going to die. You're not going to die. We're not going to, we're going to do our absolute utmost to prevent you from dying, even though it does happen. Um, but there's a psychological test there as well. It's a physical and mental crucible. So I have no issue with people being exposed to CS gas because I was exposed to CS gas. Uh, the third phase of training occurs out on San Clemente Island, which is where that video came from. The problem I have with it is the training and those evolution sheets. And again, those standards you can draw a very precise breadcrumb trail to the why. Why do we expose people to CS gas in training? Well, because one, it's very common, and the first time that you're exposed to it probably shouldn't be for real. So what do we need to do? We should expose it to people in a training environment where we can have a robust medical staff. Problem is, from my understanding, they involved people in that that actually weren't necessarily directly involved in the training pipeline. They exposed them to far too much gas. And one of the biggest issues I have with it is that there was some fucking idiot there filming it with a cell phone. Do your job. Because I tell you right now, filming it for your Instagram page is not your job. And I don't know what you think is going to come from that. And the reason they make you sing happy birthday is that that requires you inhale and exhale. It's the same. They, they do that. It's Is that what you did? Uh, we didn't. It, they didn't have us sing happy birthday. They, they There's all these like frogman songs that you sing when you're in training. And they'll just have you do something that increases your respiration because there's some people out there that can hold their breath a really long time. <laughs> now that holding your breath in an environment will, like it's still, it's on your clothes. It's, it sucks. What's it like? What's it, what's it burns. Um, have you ever, uh, well, I was, <laughs> my sister one time had like a little, uh, mace spray thing and I had, I don't know why I had it in my pocket and I sprayed it on myself and then wiped my eyes. I was going to say, have you ever done that? But most people haven't cause they're not idiots. No. So <laughs> it would be, it's, uh, it burns you, it, it really burns your eyes, water an unbelievable amount. Um, within a few seconds, you'll be questioning how it's possible that your body creates as much mucus as coming out of your body. Um, you cough. It can make it seem like people, it's hard to breathe. For some people, they describe it as, as they're inhaling like flames from this, like very hot. Is it, is it going to kill you? Unless you have an underlying medical condition, I think it's so highly unlikely. Does it feel like it's going to kill you? Probably to some people. And that's the point. We have to expose students to those things that they may be exposed to overseas. I would rather have a student have that experience and know the cognitive decline, the physical decline, the emotional decline, and the impact that it's going to have on their ability to do their job in training before it happens in real life. Now, if the instructor staff went 1% beyond what is on that evolution sheet, then they are wrong for doing that because that evolution is based on that real world requirement. If they used 5x the gas or 10x the gas, then they should be punished for that particular activity. But the, the evolution in and of itself is essential. Now, somebody looking at that on Instagram could be like, oh, well, that looks like torture. It's like, you don't know anything about this job. You're, I'm not saying your opinion isn't valid. I'm just not going to pay any attention to it because you don't know what you're talking about. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.